Welcome to my place. You'll never guess what I'm making. It's Play-Doh. And you might think I'm making this for the kids, but I'm not. Play-Doh is not just for wee kids, it's for big kids. And I love this stuff because you can make all sorts of things with it. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to make Play-Doh roses. And you're probably thinking, what does she want Play-Doh roses for? Well, wait till you see where these are going to end up. But anyway, what you need is to make the dough before you start. And in case I get it wrong, I've actually got it written down here. It's two cups of plain flour, not so self-raising, just plain flour. And then one tablespoon of oil. And then you need one cup of water, one cup of plain salt. You don't need the iodized. And then four teaspoons of cream of tartar. I'm not quite sure what the tartar's for. I think that might be just one of those, those um, sort of ingredients that makes it a bit more pliable. I'm not sure because I'm not a chemist. But anyway, what you do is you just put all, put all boil the jug, try and dissolve as much of the salt as you can, then just put all of your materials into a bowl and then what you need to do is you have to really work it up until it's nice and pliable, firmer than scones, and yeah, a bit drier than scones, but if it gets too dry and you leave it out, it will, well, it actually does dry out, but what you can do is just add a little bit more oil. But if you're going to be doing what I'm going to do with them today, get your meat, your uh, dough to the right consistency before you go any further. Right, to make the roses, what you do is, and make sure that you really, really knead the dough really well, because we don't want it to be cracking, okay? So what you do, first of all, is you would need to get yourself a nice fat pad of this, and you need to now know about a rose. Well, a rose starts off like a cigar shape, and it just unfolds as you as the petals start to open. So basically what I do is, I start off here with a nice flat little pad, and as I said, you roll that up as if you were rolling up a cigar, but not tightly. So we want that to be like that, so you've got the bud in there, and then you've got these little petals around the outside. Then what I do is, I get some other little bits, little round bits, and we are going to fix that onto there like that. And what you do is, now as I'm uh, molding these, I'm actually going to make that a bit thicker down the bottom, and then I can easily get rid of that. Right, so that opens like that, and then you get another piece, and then that gets molded onto there like so and then another bit, and you just keep going until you have a rose to the size that you want it. Right, well with the magic of television I've actually done some of those. So once, and I've got a whole heap down here, so once you've done them, you then need to get, set your oven to about 100, and 10, 120, and you're going to put them into the oven, and it takes a long, long, long time for those to bake. And what I do is I leave it in the oven overnight, very slow. Once that's happened, and they're already done, what you need to do is to give it a weak click, and if I do this, can you hear that? It needs to be nice and hollow. So once you've done that, and you can attach leaves or you can put grapes into them, there's 101 things that you can do. So once that has completely dried, what I do is I put them into a basket and I put them into the hot water cylinder or hot water cupboard and I let them dry out for several months. The next thing you need to do for what I'm going to do, and I will show you very shortly, is you need to get these and they need to be undercoated. Now, where's my little scissors? And I'll show you what this looks like. Undercoating, and I've talked about undercoating before, but I've got to tell you that undercoating is very, very important for a job like this. Now, because it's got lots and lots of salt in it, it will not go mouldy. But before I do anything else to them, I need to actually give those a good undercoating. So I start from the bottom first and then just get quite a firm brush and then just push that all into there so that the whole thing is completely, completely sealed. One coat is all that you will need with these. Right, my little trick that I do, my little tip is I actually put these into a very low oven to make sure that it's all completely dried. 
Once you have done that, you can then apply your top coat. And what I've done here is I've used, it's part of the Porter's range and it's an, a low sheen acrylic. And what I've, it's called Old Church White. It's fantastic for that lovely antique finish. And I actually don't want these to be shiny because I want these to actually look like plaster. Now, do they look like plaster to you? Of course they do. But this is the easiest way for doing the decorations that I want to do. Now, I've got this lovely mirror. Come and have a look at it. I've got this beautiful mirror. Mirror. and what I've done is I've done exactly the same process I've made much much bigger roses they've been undercoated and then I've put some gold on them because I wanted a lovely gilded mirror isn't this just fantastic great way of doing interior design without spending a lot of money because this play-doh costs like a couple of dollars to make a huge big batch and with these roses I think it took probably about a whole kilo of flour and look what I've achieved, I absolutely love it. Hey thanks for calling, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again another day.